All right. When do we make errors? Because sometimes we'll make mistakes. We may not ever know. We might not ever know the value of mu or p or whatever, but sometimes we will make mistakes. So the jury trial analogy. What's the deal with type one and type two errors? All right. When do we make a mistake? When do we make a mistake? First of all, uh, when do we not make a mistake? When do we have a correct verdict? All right. Well, we get a correct verdict if an innocent defendant is, is found not guilty. That's a correct verdict. Uh, also, if a guilty defendant is found guilty, right? That's a correct verdict. So what are the errors that can happen? And maybe your politics might come in in terms of which is worse. Type one error. That's when a defendant is innocent, but is still found guilty. Type two error, that's when a defendant is in fact guilty, but is let go, is found not guilty. Now type one error is the one that we tend to focus on more in statistics. The idea of, of uh, convicting an innocent defendant, but which in real life would be very, very disturbing for us. Uh, uh, type two error would be it may be impractical in some sense, <laughs> but type one error, the idea of uh, convicting the innocent. Although I don't know, some people are more bothered by type two error, right? Different judgments. But in statistics, maybe because I was trained as a statistician, convicting the innocent, that's the type of error that we tend to focus on. All right. Now, in, instead of a jury trial, let's think of actual statistical testing, hypothesis testing, the null as the defendant. All right. When do we make a correct decision? If the null is true and we don't reject it, that's a correct decision. Or if the null is false and we reject it, that's also a correct decision. Now, uh, where are the errors? If the null is true, but we, re we reject it. Type one error. Uh, David might say, my coin is fair. Uh, we say, no, it's not, but maybe he was telling the truth. So you hurt your friend. <laughs> Then there's type two error. The null is false, but you fail to reject it. Okay, if the null is false, then the correct then the correct decision would be to reject the null. If you don't reject the null, that's type two error. So that's the case where David's lying, all right, uh, uh, or or he doesn't know his coin. David's lying. The coin is in fact biased. The coin is in fact biased, and you don't reject the null. So maybe the coin is actually a uh, 55% head coin, right? Uh, you flip the coin, you get 53 heads out of 100. You might not reject the null when the null should have been rejected. Still, you applied appropriate statistical practice because you took me, right? <laughs> All right. We commit a type one error, again, when we reject the null, even though the null is true. It's like convicting the innocent. Type one error, convicting the innocent, null. Convicting an innocent, null. In fact, the probability that you will reject the null, given that the null is true, the probability that you, uh, that you reject the null, given that the null is true, is alpha. That is the significance level. Another way to look at that is the probability that we convict given that the null is in fact innocent. The probability that we convict given in fact that the null is innocent. Give, yeah. Type two is when we do not reject the null even though the null is false. So that's the, well, let's not go there. <laughs> All right. Interpreting alpha, we just said that. So in the, in the example of uh, testing the claim that a magician's coin is fair at the 0 0.05 significance level, two-tailed test, we've done this before. Now, let's assume the null is true. Let's assume the coin is in fact fair. We could still get unusual sample results by chance to the point where we could end up rejecting the null, thus committing a type one error. For example, a, a fair coin could conceivably come up heads 100 times in 100 flips. It's very unlikely, and I'm sure we'd be rejecting it all in that case, all right? 
Uh, but if the coin is in fact fair, we're committing a type one error. We're convicting uh, an innocent null, an innocent coin that's really fair. Now, 5%, what's to do with alpha? 5% is the chance that our test statistic will be in the critical region, okay, corresponding to the shader region below. Uh, so alpha is, is 5%, corresponds to the, uh, the total combined tail probability in the two pieces here, all right? And remember, we reject the null if our test Z is in here or here. So if the, if the null is in fact true, if the null is in fact true, then the probability of getting something as extreme as this, at least as extreme as these guys by chance, is 5%. That's alpha. 5% is alpha. So again, if the, fair coin, if the coin is in fact fair, okay, alpha is 5% is the probability that we reject the null even though the coin was in fact fair. Okay, all right, so that's that.